Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Gerso and today I am here with a two-in-one video. I'm gonna do a little tiny, just a little bit tiny book haul, <laughs> you know, at this point. No one is surprised, no one is shocked, and no one better come for me, okay? And then I realized I haven't done a recent reads or a wrap up on my channel yet, so I figured I would just start with like a recent reads video. I haven't read much anyways, but I figured I would just wrap those books up before I move into my monthly wrap up format. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get into the video. Okay, so first we're going to be starting with the books that I've recently purchased. I got about let me hold them up here. I got about five. Can I count? Five that I recently got. And by recently, I mean it came in the mail today. So um, the first book I got was Graceling by Christina Cashore. This is a fantasy book about a girl who has a special power. So People in this world who have a special power are called Gracelings. Her special power is to kill. Because she has a special power, she basically has to work under the king, who happens to be her uncle. And she works under the king as basically his thug, killing whoever he wants her to kill. And then she meets a prince who's graced with combat skills. And she starts to learn more and more about her power. And yeah typical fantasy the next book i picked up was the henna artist by alka joshi um this one is about a girl who escapes an arranged marriage and she goes to another village and she starts to work as a henna artist for the wealthy women and these women basically tell her all her secrets like she kind of acts as like a confidant type of thing and of course she gets involved in some mess and I've heard that this is really good so I picked this up as well. Next one I picked up was um, he started it by Samantha Dowling. Downing? Downing. Um, so I'm currently reading, uh, what's the book called? I'm currently reading My Lovely Wife by the same author and I'll talk more about that later but I'm really really enjoying it so I decided to pick up her recent release and this one is about a group of siblings who don't re haven't really seen each other in a while and don't really get along and then they get a note I think from their dead grandfather saying that they should take this road trip um all together so they do and I think there's like a murder mystery type thing in it so I'm really excited about this one and I think it's going to be really really good so the next two I got I got from my book of the month subscription box and I was so excited when I saw that this was one of the options for October. Um, this is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is probably one of most anticipated books of this year. It is about our main character, no shock, Addie LaRue, who makes a deal with, I think, like a demon or something that she wants to have immortality. Um, so she strikes this deal, and the only trade off with this deal is that anybody she comes across will not remember her she is easily forgettable she can't really leave her mark in the world or on the world um, and then one day she meets this guy in a bookstore who remembers her so I've heard nothing but good things about this it's kind of like a slow burn like just I heard it just pulls at your heartstrings and I need to feel things right now so I'm so excited to read this. The last book that I picked up is also a book of the month subscription pick. Um, it's The Girl in the Mirror by Rose Carlyle. Um, this one is a suspense thriller. So I don't really want to reread the synopsis, but what I remember is this is a book about two twins and one of them is trying to kill the other. And that's all I know and that's all I want to know. I, mean, I remember reading the synopsis and I thought that it, it reminded me 
a lot of a simple favor with Blake Lively and and um girl from Pitch Perfect. So um I actually just spoiled that movie. I'm so sorry. But this reminded me of that and I didn't really love that movie because of the twist but I think I'm gonna give this book a try and see if I like it. Okay so next we're gonna move in to my wrap-up section of this video. Um, I have about four books that I've recently read and then one that I am currently reading which I will probably finish the day that I'm feeling this video so I decided to include it anyways but I don't even know where to start. The first book that I read, I think I read this in the beginning of August, was The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. Um, I was seeing this book everywhere. There were so many rave reviews and everything like that, so I picked it up. It's about our main character, Nari, um, and she is basically a scammer um she performs like these religious rituals but she's not really doing anything so one day she is performing her fake ritual to get money and she summons a djinn which she didn't really know that she could do and so the djinn's like how did you summon me type of thing and um, they basically go on this whole adventure to the city of brass called Devabad and it is a dual perspective um, story so you get to see um, Nari going on her adventure with the djinn that she summoned and then you also get the perspective of Prince Ali who is in Devabad and there's a whole bunch of political issues political issues that are happening in Devabad and Nari goes there because um she, okay I can't say that because I think that's a spoiler that was a really bad description but like I said I saw this book everywhere and everybody loved it people were reading the entire this is the first book of a trilogy by the way i haven't gotten i own the second book but i haven't read it yet so initially this i don't know i'm conflicted with this book um one thing i did really love about this book is the perspectives um the dual perspectives were written in such a way that just kept the story going and it was it was weaved so perfectly together because Ali was already in the city of Brass and Nari was traveling to the city of Brass. Nari would have a question and have like didn't know much about the city and um the djinn she was traveling with would tell her about the city but then we'd get to Ali's point of view and he would elaborate even more so we would know more about the political things that are happening in Zabibad at that moment and I felt like the author really did an excellent excellent job with weaving in the two POVs and incorporating that into the story I really enjoyed that while I did love the two POVs, I felt like it was kind of a detriment to the story because I did not, it stopped me from feeling so connected to the characters. Like I would start reading Nari's part and I, I, some things would happen and I would start to feel connected to her and then it would just switch to Ali's part and it would really take me out of the story so I didn't really enjoy that so much. I would say this book is more plot driven than it is character driven so I guess that would make sense but this felt like a first book. It felt like it was given so much information all at once and it was a lot to take in and it, I also felt like it was very slow paced. It wasn't a fast read by any means, at least for me. Um, 
it took me a while to get through this book and while i did enjoy it i didn't love it so i ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars and i liked it enough to continue on with the series but i really hope that it does get better so i can love this like everybody else the next book that i read in august was Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer and we're going to use this time to take a moment of silence for how terrible this book was. Midnight Sun is the fifth book in the Twilight series. Uh, if you don't know what the Twilight series is, I guess I should explain that. Um, the Twilight series follows a human girl named Bella who falls in love with a vampire named Edward. And we basically, the four books of the series go through how they met, how they fell in love, and everything like that, and the complications that come with it. I freaking loved Twilight. Midnight Sun was supposed to basically be a Twilight told from Edward's point of view. I ended up giving this book a 2 out of 5 stars. And if we're being completely honest, I it should probably be lower. This book was so repetitive. I felt like every page told me the same thing over and over and over again. One of the other issues I had with this book was that there was some new information given, like we got to learn more about the Collins and Edward, which I really enjoyed, if I have to say. I really loved that we got more of the backstory of Alice, Rose, Ed, um, Emmett, Jasper. Like we got deep in there, especially Carlisle and Esme. I absolutely loved that. But everything else I felt was just, I did not like. I did not like Edward's character at all. And then um, they also made, like the way that was, this was written and made Bella seem completely different than what she was in Twilight. It felt like she was like this, they, Stephanie Meyer wrote her as this nice, sweet girl who's just trying to help everyone. And I was like, I did not get those vibes in Twilight at all. Like. I, I don't know where that came from. Something that really annoyed the crap out of me was just my thing is I don't mind unlikable characters. In fact, I welcome unlock unlikable characters in books. I feel like it makes the book, it could make the book better. The unlikable characters in here didn't really do anything like they made Jessica, I think, yeah, Jessica into a complete bitch like she was so bratty and I just did not like her and just hearing her thoughts from Edward's point of view and Edward just didn't tell Bella at all and I was like where's your loyalty you need to be telling her to stay away from this girl that is not her friend and then there's this whole thing with Rose and why she was like they added an extra explanation of why Rose didn't like Bella that wasn't needed and I just I don't know I was really disappointed two out of five stars should be lower and I'm not gonna go on ranting about this one any longer the next book that I picked up was Luster by Raven Leilani I gave this one a two out of five stars as well. Luster is a, at first I thought it was a romance, but oh, I was wrong. I was so wrong. I would describe this as more of a contemporary. This book follows a girl named, um, why do I, I've already forgotten. It follows a girl named Eddie who finds herself in particularly sketchy situations and it's no different when she starts an open relationship with a married man named Eric. I had high hopes for this book and I think it's because I went into it thinking that it was going to be a messy romance but it was not. It is more of a journey through Eddie's life of 
how she got to the point of the open relationship and just how she constantly messes up, I guess, or gets herself in situations where it's just like a little sketchy. I felt like this book did a lot in not a lot of pages and it it was very hard for me one to connect with the characters and two to follow really what the story is about um i know we're looking back at her life on how she got to this point and also what's happening currently to her but i just felt like it tried to tackle so many issues in such a short amount of pages and that I just could not connect with it. I kept getting taken out of the story. I didn't feel for the character at all. Um, the writing was meant to be this lyrical prose type of writing and that just added to the complexity of an already complex story that I was just I felt very disconnected as a reader and I know this is a very unpopular opinion because I've seen reviews about this book and people have loved it and it just didn't do it for me. I didn't like the plot. If there was a plot, maybe I missed it. I don't know, but I felt stupid and this was a disappointing read and it took me forever to read such a short book because I just did not want to. After I read Lester, I was in a very <laughs> mood because before I finished Lester, I read, um, I had just finished Midnight Sun, so I was expecting Lester to revive my spirits, give me some soul back inside of me, you know, but it didn't do that. In fact, it ripped everything I had left. I'm being very dramatic, but we're just we're gonna live with it so i wanted to pick up something that i really thought that i would love so i picked up birthday girl by penelope douglas and i give this book four or 4.5 out of five stars and i absolutely loved it i loved this book okay so birthday girl is an age gap romance about a girl named jordan and um she is dating this guy named cole i think yes she's dating cole and cole gets into some trouble they lose their apartment and they have to live and they have to move into cole's dad place whose name is pike as since it's an age gap romance you know a romance sparks up between cole's dad pike and jordan and uh, this book gave me everything that I was looking for and more. I ate this up. I did not want to put it down. I stayed up late. Like this book was it. It was so good. It was, I see, this is the problem. Once I love a book, I don't know how to say what I loved about it. I think I loved, like, I just, I don't have words. The words escape my mind apparently, but I I loved the characters in this. I loved the emotions that it got out of me. I loved the love interest. Pike was just mm, love it. Jordan, like at first I didn't like Jordan because I felt like she wasn't speaking up for herself. She was like cool walk all over her. Um, but then she like she was not taking no one's shit she was on it she was oh she she killed it she was badass i loved this book absolutely love it would recommend it does have some pretty explicit scenes though so if you don't like books like that then this probably won't be for you um but i thought it was so good
Um, the reason why this book did not get a five star rating out of me was because I felt like the ending was a little rushed. I feel like we could have kept it at the suspense of, you know, like, we could have kept it at we know they're going to stay together and this is where they are now, but the author took it one step further and I didn't, I felt like that was moving a bit too quick. But otherwise, I absolutely absolutely love this. Lastly, we're gonna go into the book that I'm currently reading. It is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. Girly. This one is about a normal husband and wife couple who um, you learn that there was kind of like something off with them and it turns out they just got bored one day and started killing random women and it is I am loving it there is this suspenseful thriller mystery aspect to it um and the characters are so screwed up and messed up and at the same time you're kind of rooting for them to not get caught I am loving it so much and I'm so confident that it's gonna be either a four or a five star for me that is it for today's video I hope you guys really enjoyed. If you have, if you do happen to pick up any of the books that I showed today, comment down below and let me know how you like it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys with another video soon. Bye!